What if Tesla had some secret children that no one knew about? I mean, not the CEO, the company itself. It turns out they kind of do. And I've got Alex here uh, from QC Charge. He runs a shop in Portland that uh, fixes old EVs. But he's got a lot of experience, an uncommon amount, and an understanding of the forgotten children of Tesla. Yeah, exactly. So there's kind of actually three cars that were built under partnerships with Tesla. Two are more comprehensive, um, but there's the Toyota RAV4 EV, which was built from 2012 through 2014. And then that's actually the second generation of the RAV4 EV, of course. And then there's also the 2014 through 2017 Mercedes B-Class electric, also known as the B250e. And then there was also a prior partnership with Mercedes where they actually built batteries for one of the generations of the smart electric cars. So the RAV4, we've got one right here. It's pretty unusual. They, how many of these do you imagine they made? Uh, uh, so the exact number is 2,538. <laughs> um, and yeah, all 2012 to 2014, they were all originally destined for sale in the state of California as a compliance car to meet the zero emission vehicle mandates. And it's essentially the 40 kilowatt hour Model S that never really existed. Huh. So the motor is, uh, is it a Tesla motor? Is it a modified Tesla motor? Yeah, so it's a, it's a Tesla large drive unit, which is the same drive unit that you'd find in a rear wheel drive Model S. It's slightly modified. They actually flip it around backwards and run it in reverse. And it's, um, and it also has a parking pole mechanism inside of it. They flip it around. So because of the direction that it's mounted, yeah, they just run it the other direction. Yep, they just run it in the other direction. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's okay. And then the battery is just a 40 kilowatt, but of the Tesla design. Yep, so it's, a, it's actually uh, nominally it was 41.8 kilowatt hours. And it uses a very similar module construction like you'd find in the Model S, um, but slightly different size modules. And it actually uses the same cells that the original Tesla Roadster used. So they're actually a 2600 milliamp hour 18650. Okay, so they are, so it is an intermediate. It's, now my friend Jeff, producer, friend of the show, great guy, likes to call these uh, a Roadster 1.5. It kind of is, yeah, in some ways. Yeah, and this battery appears to be bolted on to the bottom of the car. Yep. So it is not in the floor, it's below the floor. Yep, it's kind of similar to the Model S in that it's under the floor. It sticks down below the bottom of the car fairly substantially, but there's still plenty of ground clearance. And it's actually, the top of the battery is kind of form-fitted to fit around the floor pan. There's sort of structural members that run along the floor, and it actually contours around all that stuff. So they put a lot of engineering into it, despite it being a low-volume vehicle. Um, how did it drive? How does it drive? So this one is in uh, for repair. You'll have it running soon. Yeah, so this car is actually, the repairs are mostly complete on it. This actually had a really simple issue that I fixed on it, and it also got our rotor cooling delete for the drive unit to future-proof it against potential future uh, coolant intrusion. And how fun is it? Um, so the, I assume you've driven the RAV, this RAV, this style of RAV4. Oh yeah, absolutely. I've been been in hundreds of these cars. Um, it's on paper, if I remember correctly, the it was like 152 horsepower or something, but it makes a just a boatload of torque, and they actually do zero to sixty in about seven seconds. Hmm. Um, Better and really, than a minivan. Yeah, and at that and it's really limited by traction because it's just front wheel drive and these things mm -hmm. will spin the tires like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, even the new Toyota Buzz Forks and like the Nissan Aria barely have 200 horsepower in their two wheel versions. Yeah. Um, so 150 for a compliance car of an early iteration is not ridiculous. And again, you have to compare it to what it was at the time, 12 years ago. Yeah, uh, performance was not what it is today. Yeah, exactly. And what kind of range were these getting on the 40 kilowatt pack? So the, the EPA range rating on these is kind of odd because the cars were set up where they had a, uh, 
basically just a soft button where you could increase the charge limit. So the default was a reduced charge limit of about 85%, oh. and then if you pressed the button, it would charge it all the way to full. Oh. And the EPA number is kind of a weird hybridized version of somewhere between the two, or maybe it's the lower, rent, lower one. So the EPA rated range was only 103 miles, I think. But in the real world, they could actually go a lot further than that. Um, it, when they were new, it was pretty easy to achieve 120, 130, even 140 miles. Wow. Um, these days in the real world, they're you know more like somewhere in the 90 to 110 miles, depending on the, the health of the battery. Okay. Anything else we should discuss about this before we move on to the next two? I, my question, I guess, would be, based on the way it's built, based on the way it's designed, did it ever stand a chance of going mass market? It never stood a chance of going mass market because it was never designed with that intent. Right. So from the get-go, Toyota only envisioned building. The, the actual number of cars they had to build to meet the compliance numbers was 2,600. And there's a handful of other cars that were built that met the rest of the compliance number besides the 25, 38 of these that were built. Um, most of the rest of those cars were actually a Scion IQ EV, hmm. which is super, super rare. I imagine. Um, but yeah, so really it never had a chance of being mass market because of was never intended for that. Um, but in the RAV4 community, they have a, a pretty good following, and a lot of people like to keep them on the road because even to this day, there's not a lot of options on the market that are uh, quite as much of a proper utility vehicle as the RAV4 EV. It's got tons of cargo space and, and all that good stuff. I would agree with all of those statements. And as rare as it is, the only other car I can think of that is as rare as this that I have seen more of than this because I have seen uh, four or five of these now would be the Roadster and of course those are going to still be around those are eye-catching famous this is just a car that people happen to love so let's talk about the Mercedes B-Class next what was that about or would you rather do the smart car first whichever one you um choose. well so the, the smart car I don't have a ton of experience with, and really the only thing that was done by Tesla on that car was just the battery. So the battery is really the only part of that car they did. So um, we can discuss that quickly. They made uh, a battery that would fit in the limited space that delivered the specs that were needed. Yeah. It was water, it was liquid cooled. Yep, liquid cooled battery. And do, do you know where it went? Did it go behind the driver? Um, so it kind of goes under the car, sort of behind the rear seats, if if I recall correctly. I've never really worked on one, so I don't know. There's a not a lot of space. There's kind of a fun story about the way that that came about. Um, so the story goes that apparently some engineers at Tesla went to Mexico and purchased a smart car because they, they weren't available in the US at the time. And they actually stuck a Roadster powertrain in the smart car and took it to Mercedes and showed it to them. And that was kind of what started that partnership in the first place. But apparently it was ridiculous. It would do wheelies and crazy the, stuff. The way I would add to the story, from what I understand, is the Mercedes guys were coming into town for a meeting, just a preliminary meeting. And Tesla said, hey, let's make one. And they said, we can't. They don't even sell them. So they sent an employee over the border with a platinum card to pick one up and had it ready in time. Yep. Yeah, so they yeah, did exactly. their pitch and said, by the way, do you want to see it? And they said, what? <laughs> so it is fun. And I uh, should mention that we'll probably put something like that up on the screen. So then let's talk. Let's change our background a little bit. So we've got something more interesting to look at. Uh, so now let's talk about the, uh, the Mercedes B-Class. What is the B-Class? Is that, that, I don't think that's sold in the U.S., is it? It was never sold in the U.S. as a gasoline or a diesel yeah. vehicle. They're real popular as diesels in a lot of parts of the world. Um, but they were sold as the electric version in the U.S. Um, and so, yeah, depending on the year, they're either a B-Class ED or a B250E. And it's almost all the same powertrain as this car, same reverse rotation large drive unit, but with a slightly smaller size battery. It's only about 36 or 38 kilowatt hours, I think, on, I think it's 36 on the B-Class. 
Um, and there's a few other modifications that they did that made a lot of the parts on the car slightly more unique, but they're still all Tesla parts. Mm -hmm. So the onboard charger, DC to DC converter, all that stuff is still Tesla, just, just like this car. I don't think I've seen one of those in shows. Do you know how many were made? I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head. I think that I've heard somewhere in the neighborhood of like seven or 8,000. Oh, uh, but how many in the US? I don't know how many in the US, but I know that they were sold internationally. So they were sold in Europe and the US. In the US, probably two or 3,000, about the same number as the RAV4 would be my guess. And probably for the same reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that would be my guess as well. Have you seen any other unicorns out there uh, that people might be interested in that n aren't necessarily Teslas? Um, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of other interesting rare EVs out there. Uh, I've actually seen one of those Ion, uh, the Scion IQ EVs that I mentioned earlier. I think there were only about 70 some odd of those cars made, so it's wow. super ultra rare. Uh, it was on Catalina Island, actually, of all places. Wow. Um, but yeah, there's some other kind of neat, rare cars as well. Lots of compliance cars. I've worked on a handful of roadsters, about the same number of those as there are the RAV4. Um, and yeah, there's all kinds of neat stuff in the, in the early days of EVs for sure. Wow. So that's a lot of fun. Guys, uh, I know this one was a little nerdy, but it's kind of my idea of fun. I know there are a number of viewers who love stuff like this. I don't expect this to become the biggest video I've ever done. But I hope uh, if you found it interesting, getting some perspective, some lost history, if you will, on some of these more interesting vehicles that you're unlikely to see, awesome. Hope it helped. If you have any questions for me or for Alex, I imagine he could uh, answer them. I could even come back. Who knows? We're both kind of in the same part of the world, so I end up seeing him once or twice a month, it seems like. So what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Uh, leave it all in the comments below and uh, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots in the EV that you make yourself.